it's in the banana belt. <laughs> it never snows in the Glen. What's the matter? Okay. Good morning to all. You see, we've got some folks uh, entering, um, probably due to the inclement weather. People are having to get their vehicles into four-wheel drive, get up the hills, although there's probably no snow in the Glen. No, never. It's the banana belt, right? Yeah. Welcome to those that are uh, joining us by way of um, Zoom or by way of uh, YouTube. And a special hello to Harvey in Nova Scotia, who's pulling the strings from Nova Scotia. Is that correct, Eddie? Well done. Isn't that wonderful technology? And we have Hetty with us. Seeing as Harvey's in Nova Scotia. Well, thank you for being with us, Eddie. Do we have any announcements or pronouncements from the church this morning? Uh, yes, if anybody wants to uh, get white sad, there's forms at the back that you can fill out and give it to you before after church. And also, if anybody is going to donate to the farm, uh, that's the other one. Okay, the uh, ACW has uh, adopted a farm. Yeah, what country is that in? Somewhere, somewhere in the in Uganda. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I do have one pronouncement. Uh, we have been praying for. Uh, Roberta's uncle, Henry, who was in very poor shape and um, was, they were talking about taking him to hospice, um, but as a matter of fact, he's now at home. So that's good news and we give thanks to God for the healing. He's getting around in a walker and we pray God's blessings upon Marilyn and Henry as they press forward in the time that God has given them. Our Advent liturgy uh, appears on your leaflet. So we'll begin together. And the reading part, um, we can just uh, have, I'll do the P part and uh, the R part can be the response of all the people. So you don't need to come forward. All right, shall we be here? O come, O come, thou Lord of might. self-sacrificial actions to reality for those around us and all God's creation. We now light the candle of love. Out. As we continue. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us. This is how God showed his love he sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so that you must love one another. All people will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. 
Lord God, may we, your people, who look forward to the birthday of Christ, experience the joy of salvation, and celebrate that feast with love and thanksgiving. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll now have our first lesson from Holy Scripture. A reading from Isaiah 7, 10, 16. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol, or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look. The young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curd and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in 
dread will be deserted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in Psalm 80 as found in your leaf. reading from Paul's from the letter of Paul to the Romans Paul a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle set apart for the gospel of God which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the holy scriptures the gospel concerning his son who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to the son of to be the son of God with power according to to the, to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of the faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn number 98, Hark the Glad Sound, the Savior Comes.
with you. And also with you. On the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from the sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, that had no marital relations with her until she had born a son and named him Jesus. This is the gospel of Christ. <laughs> Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God so loved the world, not part of the world, but all of creation. This is the message of Advent and Christmas. God's everlasting love is revealed in Christ Jesus of Nazareth. All of our readings point to this event in time and in space. All creation is saved and glorified in his incarnation, his life, birth, death, resurrection, and ascension. To truly believe this, we would love nothing. We would love no one more than God. And the love that overflows from him would then overflow from us to all of creation. For we no longer look at God from a distance in fear and misunderstanding, but up close in an awe and wonder of his eternal love. And this will be fully so. This will be the reality at the end of the age. Yes, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess the church teaches and preaches, but not out of fear of judgment at the advent, at the arrival of an offended and angry God. Every knee will bow and every tongue confess at the overwhelming, awesome revelation of ineffable divine love in person, in infinite power this time, in might and majesty and glory unrestrained by the bounds of time and space. Then all the created order will bow down before love's full face-to-face -face presence. There will be no exceptions. For some, this will be paradise and bliss, and for others, this will be perdition, and that condition will be eternal. For God is love. 
the same yesterday, today, and forever. This encompasses the themes of Advent, this first Advent and self-emptying love with deep humility within time and space in creation, and a second Advent in power and glory will bring the age of time and space to a renewed beginning beyond the imagination of any human person. For the presence of the love of all will bring eternal joy for some and eternal frustration for others. If we do not love God and love as God loves, then the full presence of God being love will be something that we would want to avoid, I would hope. This self-emptying love in giving himself freely to seek and to serve and to save the lost doesn't show favoritism. His love doesn't discriminate, but is lavished on all creation. As St. Paul says, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. Transgressions or sin, missing the mark, whatever term you might choose to use, is the misuse of the powers given to us by God for doing good and used contrary to God's commandments. The power of sin and death is defeated in the incarnation of love on the cross. And then God pours out the Holy Spirit on all flesh and directly into the souls of the baptized faithful church. This is an order to enable any human that is willing to be by God's uncreated energies to transform transgressions, sin or missing of the mark into compassion, into generosity, wisdom, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control and selfless act of love. And even when we miss the mark, and I know I do, I can't speak for you, even when we miss the mark, God is nurturing, God is healing in truth and love for the good of us, for the good of all creation. And if God is bestowing love on everyone and everything, will we respond and do the same? Any other way of life is not the way of Christ, the way that Christ brought to this world. He is the way of non-discriminatory love. We often forget this, at least I do. As one Christian writer says, this is also the way of very little children who have not yet discovered the separate self, in quotation marks, who have yet to learn the way of this world, which is to dominate others through self-centeredness and selfishness. Very young children are humble and loving but in this age, that has a shelf life. What to do? It doesn't matter who we are, what we are, what we've done. Humility opens the floodgates of divine grace and sets love free in creation, including us. We are of creation. Are we followers of Jesus who fear or believe others to be our inferiors? Do we harbor hidden prejudices? These are sure signs that self-interest is the motive, the childishness in us, not the childlikeness in us. Self-focused love and all the byproducts of ego, the thoughts, the feelings, the actions, hinder us and keep us from loving as Christ loves and giving as God gives. So the faithful church choosing union with love first over self first, seek the Holy Spirit diligently in prayer. Why? To reveal any hindrances to love and rejoice when those hindrances are revealed. 
Do so with a spiritual mentor is the best way. Then we repent and we are transformed by God's grace, God's uncreated energies into becoming more and more fully human. And to be more and more fully human means to become more and more filled with faith, humility, truth, and love, selfless love. They will know that we are Christians by our love, the scriptures remind us, by humility and love, even for our enemies. Believe me, that is no small task. In fact, without God, it's impossible. Dr. Anthony Bloom, a French doctor, a true saint, wrote this. Unless we look at a person and see the beauty there is in this person, we can contribute nothing to her or him. One does not help a person by discerning what is wrong, what is ugly, what is distorted. Christ looks at everyone he meets, the harlot, the thief, and sees the hidden beauty there. Yes, perhaps distorted. Yes, perhaps damaged, but beauty nonetheless. And what he does is to call out this beauty. If all human beings share 99.9% .9 of the same DNA, that doesn't leave much room for hate, does it? Without non-judgmental humility of heart, we cannot love as God loves us. The church seeks all holy means possible to lift up others by bringing hope, peace, joy, and love, and truth, humbling ourselves before the other as Christ himself being present. Anything other is born of pride and self-interests. We lift one another up. We tear no one down. But Ray, what about the people that, you know, you know those people. Remember the words of our Lord, don't try to separate the wheat from the tares, the wheat from the weeds. We must be careful not to place barriers between ourselves and God by causing others to suffer. The martyr Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote, God does not love some ideal person, but rather human beings just as we are. Not some ideal world, but rather the real world. Wanting the world to conform to our ideals is the opposite of humble service and selfless love. This is not the way of Christ and therefore must not be the way of the church. Christ Jesus came as the healing presence of love in the world and calls us to join him, to share what I have, to share what you have, to share who I am, who you are with people in need. And by the grace of God, love the unloved. God created this universe because God is love and every one of us is God's gift to the world. Our life purpose in union with the Holy Spirit is to make a difference in transforming creation. Parish ministry is based on love, compassion, and truth. There's no other way to be faithful to Christ. For indeed, we come to realize that we do not live for ourselves alone, that we become followers of the one who gave himself so completely for us so completely out of love, for that is who he is. Teach me to love. I've heard that many times before from folks. Teach me to love. God's love isn't something that we can be taught. As soon as we come to be, the ability to love and the need to love becomes reality within us. Since we receive the command to love God and love others, we hold from the first moment of our existence the innate power and ability to love selflessly. But remember that has a shelf life and things change as we age. 
But as we cooperate more and more fully with the Holy Spirit, love is perfected in the human soul. For the baptized faithful has, have already received from God the ability to fulfill all his commands, including be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect, to love others, to love your neighbor as yourself, to love even your enemies, to love as God loves. Often we avoid this. Sometimes we even disagree with this truth as if something beyond our capacity in Christ were being asked of us. Sometimes we get hard hearted as if we're being called to pay back more than that which we have received from God. Advent calls the church to repent of this, to love, to deny self, to take up our cross and to follow him. And what does that mean to deny ourselves? It means to surrender to love, who is God, to be love in this broken world. 1,600 years ago, a great mystic and saint said what psychology has only recently stumbled upon. He taught that the human beings have two selves. The first he calls the Christ self, the original and defining self, the image and likeness of God. The second he called the legion of our other selves. These other selves are represented in us by the many thoughts, feelings, worldly passions and emotions that we experience moment by moment. We are fragmented, it seems, into many parts. At some point by the grace of God working in us through holy baptism, the Christ self awakens to our God-given beauty and worth and turns a compassionate gaze upon the legion of other selves within us. Reconciliation begins to flow, fragmentation is overcome, and the inner world is united in love. The whole of life, external and internal, is swallowed up in love. So it's not the Christ self that must be denied, but the legion of other selves. Denial does not mean rejection but means transformation. As the baptized soul awakens to the presence and power of the grace of God and begins to adopt the way of the cross, the way of selfless love and self-sacrifice and humility as the true way of being and the true way of living. And all that is not love begins to wither and begins to fade for love alone is eternal. This is the message the world longs to hear. That was true in the past, true in the present, will be true in the future. And in, and in Christ, the church not only hear this reality, but live and reveal the reality of love and action for where love is, God is. Selfless love is the one unmistakable sign of a disciple of Christ. If I have not love, I am nothing, says the apostle. God loved the world so much that he came to tell us and to show us. Although God could always be found in nature and in the Holy Scripture, that's not enough. Love cannot stay at arm's length. Because Emmanuel, God with us, embodies love. God's most personal invitation to accept his internal embrace and share his eternal, humble, selfless love with all creation is our call. Yes, the Lord loves us infinitely. But we don't have to follow him. Becoming love by grace is a free choice. We choose to repent and become love over and over again until we meet love face to face, bowed down before him in a lowly manger this Christmas. 
or enthroned in glory, majesty, might, and dominion at the end of time. To be love is always a free choice. May we pray. Loving God, we thank you that love has come down at Christmas, that you invite us into your eternal love, that we can become loved by grace. We don't cease to be human. We become fully human. For love is who you are. Love is what you bring. And love, you send us into the world to heap upon other people selflessly and for your glory. Amen. We continue on page 189 with the Apostles' Creed. May we stand as one. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May we be seated or kneel for the prayers of the people. Everlasting God, we come today on the last Sunday of our Advent journey towards Christmas, and we give thanks as we remember those journeys that were being taken on that first Christmas so long ago. Mary and Joseph traveling by foot to enroll in the Roman census, the wise men following the signs in the heavens, the unsuspecting shepherds moving from pasture to pasture with their flocks, the Jewish nation moving through history towards your world-changing event. We pray, God of eternal love, and respond. Hear our prayer. Father God, as we think of Mary, pregnant with the Holy Child, journeying towards motherhood, we pray for all women who are expecting a child. We also remember those in difficult situations because of their pregnancy, and are thankful that you are with them and us all in every circumstance of this age. God, be of eternal love. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all who, like Mary and Joseph, are making long and difficult journeys by foot, especially those fleeing from war and terror. For those trying to escape hardship, drought, famine, or persecution, <laughs> for those embarking on perilous journeys across the world, and for those who are providing for them. God of eternal love, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Creator God, we pray for the world, which like that of the Holy Land at the time of Jesus' birth is facing incredible change. We pray for world leaders and for your peace. God of eternal love, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Mighty God, we pray for men and women who are making amazing advances in so many disciplines. Help us at all times to use our creativity for the good of your creation and let it never get in the way of the way that we live our lives for you and for our neighbors in Christ. God of eternal love, hear our, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we pray for the sick and the suffering in body, soul, or estate, especially when having to travel for treatment and for those who love them and care for them. We lift up before you, Doug, Neil, Wesley, Marie, Morris, 
Henry, Marilyn, Sean, Tanya, Florence, Millie, Susan, Linda, Rosemary, James, Laura, Grace, Evelyn, Carrie, Harry, and Millie, and those in our hearts. God of eternal love, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving God, give us ears to hear and minds to understand the message and gift of Christmas so that we may look forward with patience and confidence to that time when we will join you in the peace of eternity. And we especially pray for any we know who recently died and are on that journey to you. God of eternal love, hear our prayer. Gracious God, who chose Blessed Mary to be the mother of the promised Savior, fill us with your grace, that like Mary, we might rejoice in your salvation. Send us out to finish our Advent journey, filled with hope, peace, joy, and love, ready to receive that promise afresh into our lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and your all-holy and life-giving Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. And he may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Our offertory hymn number 117, Lo, our rose air blue.
using Eucharistic prayer number five, page 204. And our prayer over the gifts for this, the fourth Sunday of Advent. Gracious God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, who sanctified the mother of your only begotten Son, make holy all we offer you this day. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, for the gift of a world full of wonder and for our life which comes from you. By your power you sustain the universe. Glory, Glory to you forever and ever. ever. You created us to love you with all our heart and to love each other as ourselves, but we rebel against you by the evil that we do. In Jesus, your Son, you bring healing to our world and gather us unto one great family. Therefore, with all who serve you on earth and in heaven, we praise your wonderful name as we sing. suffers with the sick and the rejected. Betrayed and forsaken, he did not strike back, but overcame hatred with love. On the cross, he defeated the power of sin and death. By raising him from the dead, you show us the power of your love to bring new life to all your people. Glory to you forever and ever. On the night before he gave up his life for us, Jesus at supper with his friends took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is shed for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Glory to you, you forever and ever. Gracious God, with this bread and wine, we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus, and we offer ourselves to you in him. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that we may know the presence of Jesus in the breaking of bread and share in the life of the family of your children. Glory, Glory to, to you, you forever and ever. Father, you call us to be your servants. Fill us with the courage and love of Jesus, that all the world may gather in joy at the table of your kingdom. We sing your praise, Almighty Father, through Jesus our Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever.
for the Advent season. God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. And these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Continue in prayer. Faithful God, in this sacrament we receive the promise of salvation. May we, like the Virgin Mary, be obedient to your will. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, either here on earth or already with the Lord, this day and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn for the liturgy is number 95, but I would remind everyone that uh, we have the candlelight uh, Christmas Eve service right here at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. candlelight service, beautiful downtown Dutchroom. Spread the word. And regular 10 o'clock service for the Feast of the Nativity at 10 o'clock on Sunday.
words, true source of life, our lives sustain, the best bliss that earth imparts, we turn unfilled to you again, and we depart in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. church is as it is gathered here today uh, we need to uh, put a motion forward and that motion is put forward and is moved by Ross and seconded by Laura that we instruct Laura to get the permission of the bishop to obtain uh, a letter uh, allowing us to get a notice to read her uh, that means that this year we won't have to get a four thousand dollar audit so, you've heard the motion before you to uh, give Laura the power to go ahead and contact the bishop uh, and to ask for a notice to read her letter. Um, any discussion around that? All in favor? Any opposed? Carried unanimously. Thank you very much. <laughs> Who said that? I resemble that remark. 